So, um, quick disclaimer, um, I'm a Star Wars nerd. I grew up on Star Wars. Um, if you are more nerdy than I am, um, please don't just shout out that I'm doing something against canon or anything like that. Come talk to me afterwards and we'll nerd out about it, all right? So I'm taking a little bit of liberty with, uh, with the theme here. But um, if you will join me on this journey, um, pretend you are um, building a website with ambitions to take over the entire galaxy. Um, initial launch was a great success, right? You, you did it and pushed all the buttons and pulled all the levers and fired your, uh, your big uh, death ray and, and blew up a, a planet. Um, however, there's some bad actors out there. And those bad actors are plotting to take down your website. So what we have to do is we have to figure out, with one small hole in our defenses, the entire thing can blow up and destroy everything that you've spent all this time building. So uh, luckily, as Drupal has progressed over the years, its defenses has also gotten better, uh, as well as its offenses, offenses here. Um, but the rebels are smart. Um, they continue to come back. Um, but luckily for us, their ways are consistent. And so uh, no matter what, um, we can learn from their patterns uh, and from reusing plot lines over and over again um, to see how uh, these hacks happen. So if you are new to cybersecurity, new to developing, we're going to be going over some basic hacks today. If you are an all pro, um, chances are you have one of these vulnerabilities in code you've written. So go back and look at it. Um, but today we're going to talk about Death Star security. Uh, and how all it takes is a few rebels to take down your website. So this is going to be interactive. It is 5.40 p.m. Um, on the last day of the last session. Um, so if everyone can get out laptops or whatever, if you want to join along with us and go to deathstarsecurity.com. Surprisingly, this domain wasn't taken, and I haven't gotten a cease and desist from Disney yet. So um, for as long as it's up, I'll leave it up there. Um, and while you're going there, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm the founder and CEO of Locker and Cellar Door. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with everything from startups uh, to large enterprises. I've been working in Drupal for about a decade. Uh, I've also been working in WordPress lately as well. Uh, don't hold it against me. They're actually a really fun uh, group of people to be with. Um, and then more recently, I've started getting into uh, policy and advisement. And I sit on an advisory committee for the Department of Homeland Security uh, for privacy and uh, data integrity. So. Uh, but for this, I am taking the role of the security architect uh, for the Empire, and we're going to look at a few plugins or modules that I have found uh, in our code base and some issues that they, uh, they introduced for us. Um, so if you go to the website, you will see a whole bunch of uh, fun puns and jokes about, uh, about Star Wars. But down at the bottom, there's going to be two links that you're going to be following there. So we're going to be talking about uh, the droid scanner search module um, that one of our, our, or one of our developers built for us. Um, and we're also going to be talking about Stormtrooper customer targeting. Um, and so I love that I get little laughs because I've given this talk before and nobody got that joke. Um, so the first one, Droid Scanner. This was a, uh, an advanced search module that they wanted to um, consume data from an outside source uh, whenever a search uh, happened. And then also after that search was done, uh, they wanted to do some uh, telemetry and some, some metrics on it. Now, um, you might think, what harm can a few droids do, right? Um, well, the harm that a few droids can do is they can uh, come at your site with what we call a DDoS attack, a, di a distributed denial of service. And the idea here is that uh, through nefarious code, uh, bad actors can spin up a whole bunch of uh, browsers or a whole bunch of connections to your website and take it down. Uh, particularly what they're looking for is... Um, forms and uh, slow loads, right? Anything that takes a long time to do. And so this search module unfortunately took down our website. And so um, this is a, a, if anyone can read the code, uh, it just says sleep. You don't just sleep a module. So, uh, but this is an example of code going out to an external source, right? And I've actually had this happen. Uh, we didn't get DDoS on it luckily, but if you have code that goes out to an external source, and it has to do some processing there, there can be some lag time in that, uh, in that processing. Then if you're doing additional stuff, if you're doing additional work after the, um, or on, after the results are back and you're processing through them and you're connecting to a whole bunch of things, we as developers want to do as much as we can with the code that's in front of us. However, if, um, if an attacker can see that your code 
run slow on a specific form, and they hit that form over and over and over and over again to the tune of millions of times, uh, they can take your site down, right? And so um, if you go to the website and you click on the uh, Droid Scanner, uh, what I did is this is actually the code running there. Um, it is on every search result. It's just going to wait four seconds as it's rendering that. Um, and so if you, it's all lorem ipsum in there, so just type in some Latin word into the search on that site. Uh, and you'll notice that it takes an incredibly long time. Uh, if enough of you do it in the room, it'll likely take down the server as well. Um, and that is an example of what a DDoS is. So one of the ways we can do this is move your slow functions to asynchronous processes. Um, I built a site once that was an airline ticketing reservation system, right? There is a lot that goes on once you swipe the card or enter in the details before that ticket is actually purchased. And if we were to put that all in the page load, uh, it would take 30, 40 seconds in order for something to happen, right? Um, I've seen this a lot of the times where people will just hook into uh, init or, or you know, right at the beginning of the, uh, the bootstrap, and then they just start doing a whole bunch of processing, and it just slows everything down. So if you're doing anything that uh, a form submission will um, slow down, move it off to an asynchronous process. Create a queue. Um, Drupal does a really good job with the batch API of working its way through queues. Uh, and then you can either create some sort of um, internal webhook uh, that comes back and does more work on it. Um, the easy way that I've always done it is just to create a, uh, a cron job and then have uh, that cron uh, portion of your module just churn through all the slow stuff. So A, users are happy, the website loads fast, uh, and B, the uh, company is happy, or in our case, the empire is happy because the website wasn't taken offline. This is where we're gonna spend a little bit more time is uh, in the Stormtrooper customer targeting. Um, and so, how does this module miss? Uh, and this module misses because um, what we're doing here is uh, we're saying, okay, I want this to be uh, some customer tracking. I want to have an identifier that I'm going to give to the customer to track them through their whole process, right? As we start looking at these digital uh, experience platforms and uh, more of the content is, is dynamic, we're doing a lot more processing like this. Um, a lot of the times that's getting passed in URL strings, so if you ever click on a link and you get these really long URL strings, those are normally just tracking um, uh, tokens that are being passed along. And so what our, our module does here is it says, um, I'm just going to take whatever is in that query string and assign it to a variable to then output into my theme. Um, as a developer, you might not think that that's that bad of a thing, right? Because um, you know that your front end developer is smart and they're going to be uh, taking care and sanitizing the data that, that comes in. Uh, but our front end developer, or this is dangerous, don't ever trust anything coming in. Um, sanitize it the moment it comes through the, the doors. Because what you don't know is if your uh, front end developer doesn't know that that's sanitized, that's not sanitized, they're just going to use it, right? They're just going to say, hey, whatever's there, just output it. Um, oh, I'm running into some issues. I need to hack around. I'm going to turn off, if you notice here, it says um, the value is uh, get tracking raw. Uh, if you put raw as a filter on Twig, it will just output and not auto-escape, right? And it's a nice hack that, you know, for some reason the formatting's not going well, and instead of going back and actually talking to the developer and saying, hey, let's figure this out, I'm just going to put raw on it and let it output. Um, what that says is whatever I get, just put it out. Um, so if you click on that next link, and we'll do that here uh, because this is a fun little demo to do. Um, we're going to, um, nope, people are playing around with this one already. I purposely made this site to hack around, so you guys are doing a good job. Uh, let's see here. <coughs> so by doing this, um, you'll notice up here in the corner, I get a little shake going on. If this was actually able to plug into audio, this would be playing the Harlem Shake right now. Um, this is a really fun <laughs> script that you can put on. Uh, and then pretty soon here, our entire page is going to do the uh, Harlem Shake. Um, so what I have done is I have injected, if you look at the URL up here, uh, at the very top, I said, well, instead of input and putting a value into the input, I'm just going to load an arbitrary script from a server that I can control. Once that JavaScript is in your browser, I have full control over it. I can do whatever I want. Um, and while I may just 
you know, make you dizzy by having things moving around. Uh, I can scrape your cookies. I can uh, key log. I can do a whole bunch of things. So um, cross-site security or cross-site scripting is um, actually a very common um, bug that we or, or vulnerability that we see. Um, luckily, though, um, uh, yeah, so it allows you to run arbitrary or remote JavaScript. Um, it can exfiltrate data, so it can look at what, what data is on the screen. Uh, if you're in a banking application, it can take that information out. Um, it can capture cookies, and if you're not careful and you're not using your cookies properly, luckily Drupal does. Um, if you're building a website that's, that's not managing its cookies properly, uh, you can actually leak your session data, and then the hacker can then act as you. And there's nothing that'll stop that, because to um, Drupal or whatever system, uh, it's, it's a request from you. Uh, they can do key logging. Um, for those of you uh, here in the EU and the UK, um, this is what happened with British Airways uh, when they lost all the credit cards. There was some nefarious JavaScript that was running, and as people were entering their credit card numbers and CVVs and everything into the form, all they were doing was just key logging what was happening on the screen and then sending that back to a server uh, so they could collect all the credit card data. So this can get really nefarious uh, really quickly. Uh, so sanitize your user input. Never trust anyone including your admins. Because if a session leaks, a bad, bad password's out there, uh, like is on the, the demo site there, uh, that a few of you have already hacked into, um, your admins can, be, um, can, can put out some, some bad uh, uh, input as well, or somebody can act as an admin and get in there and do stuff. Um, luckily though, uh, or in the other thing, um, your inputs aren't limited to what, um, what you put out into a form. So just because you have a select list doesn't mean that I can send you back something that isn't in that select list. Um, luckily, um, Form API does all this for you. So if you're building a form on Drupal and you're not using Form API, stop and go use Form API. There is zero reason not to. Um, I will be honest, in building this little demo and the, the couple of click-throughs, it took a really, really long time to figure out how to hack Drupal because it is so hard. They are, they are sanitizing everything now, uh, which is good. Um, this same demo in WordPress took me about 10 minutes. Um, I'll just say that. But um, how do you sanitize the text? You have uh, cross-site scripting uh, classes that you can call uh, with filter and filter admin. Filter admin will allow a little bit more HTML through. So if you say, okay, I can trust my, my admins a little bit more, um, it'll, it has a broader set of uh, allowable uh, characters in it, but it will filter out any uh, cross-site scripting or any JavaScript. People get really fun and they try doing uh, base64 encoding their, um, their payloads. They, they'll do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, this takes all that out. So um, again, the form API will, um, it will sanitize all inputs, outputs. It'll sanitize um, things that are going into markup. It sanitizes everything, and it sanitizes it as it comes back in after you submit it as well. Um, in Twig, don't use raw filter, period, full stop. Just don't use it. Um, because Twig, if all you do is you put the double brackets and you put a value in there, it will auto-escape every string that comes through it. Um, so that was one of the nice things of moving from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 is you had a lot more inherent security in the theming layer itself. Um, and then lastly here, um, use a code sniffer um, in, uh, I like to use uh, VS Code now. I'm a convert. I used to think only nerds used this, um, but it is awesome. Um, Microsoft actually created a really good product. Um, and so uh, what's really cool is uh, we have official docs up on Drupal.org um, to how to configure um, Visual Studio and put your um, put code sniffers and linters in there. Not only will you be creating nice and pretty code that's according to community standards, so your modules um, will not uh, fail any tests, um, it also will highlight, hey, you haven't sanitized this, or hey, you have an error here. And the nice thing about VS Code is uh, it makes that very apparent. Like If you look at your code, um, and then also it will do some, uh, every time you hit save, or I have it set up, so every time I hit save, it'll come up and tell me all my errors, all the issues that I have. Um, and it's caught, I mean, I do security for a living, and it's caught errors that I've been uh, putting in code as well. So um, with that, I want to leave you with the idea of Death Star security. We focus on the perimeter a lot. 
We put up WAFs, we put up as strong of servers as we can, uh, but it doesn't make up for bad code. Um, so make sure that as you're, as you're uh, working on your systems that you're also focusing on um, the little functions and the little things inside your code uh, that could eventually blow up the entire thing. So with that, um, we have about five-ish minutes. Um, if you want to go get beer and food, um, you won't offend me by leaving. If you have a question, um, I'll take those now. All right, I think a lot of people want beer and food. So with that, thank you. Um, make sure that you go to the contribution sprints tomorrow um, and um, be sure to take the, the surveys as they're up there.